This video is going to be a look at the Rams opening possession in week 14 during the Ravens thrilling 37-31 win um, in overtime. I'm going to focus on the conflict that the Rams offensive style presents and creates for a defense, particularly one that has to match their 11 personnel group with a nickel personnel on defense. And you can see the Ravens have done that here with Kyle Hamilton being the nickel. Two other safeties are in a high safety alignment against this compressed 11 personnel formation. I'm going to call this one ace. Basically going to deal with two formations um, in this video, ace and then Trey Wing. I'll explain both of them a little bit. One thing the Rams do is, is they create a numbers advantage with these compressed formations, and they've got complementary plays out of the same formation, out of the same alignment. When I say numbers advantage, one thing that they do is they utilize wide receivers to block interior players. And here you can see uh, Puka Nakua is being asked to iso block Patrick Queen, pretty big collision there. Odafe Owe, the edge defender, is setting the tight end um, inside. That's what people talk about, setting the edge. It's about more than that. And sometimes you can kind of tell people who've been uh, responsible for, for edge defenders or outside linebackers because every play isn't a set the edge kind of play. Sometimes you want to uh, force the ball to bounce. Sometimes you want to play like a solid technique head up on the tight end like Kyle Van Noy did later, and I'll link up that video. Um, in the description at this time so you guys can see it. But in any case, it gives you a little bit of an illustration of how they create a numbers advantage. And to be honest with you, and I don't think Ravens fans are going to like to hear this at all, if this game was to be played this Sunday, this week coming up, and the Ravens utilized the same defensive alignments, the same fronts, the same thing would happen. I'm not saying that the Rams would score 31 points. They would be able to generate downhill run plays like this where the running back's path is not impeded whatsoever up to the line of scrimmage. That's what the system is designed to do. Look, you see you have both wide receivers, Cup and Nakua, tasked with blocking interior defenders. In the case of Nakua, he's blocking an inside linebacker, Patrick Queen. And in the case of Cooper Cup, he's folding inside to block Kyle Hamilton. It's a, it's a mirrored concept, and that's the thing that I think is so brilliant about it, number one. Number two is a, is a little bit frustrating from a Ravens fan's uh, perspective. Talking about dual Jill isos, meaning someone is blocking out on an edge defender. To the left, it's a tight end. To the right, it's a tackle. And then a receiver is inserting into that gap that's created to go block a defender. In the case of Nakua, Queen. In the case of Cup, Kyle Hamilton. Creating that numbers advantage in a, tall, in a tight space. What you're looking at on the screen right now is basically 10 on 7 with Kyle Hamilton being the quote seventh defender Marlon Humphrey comes forward to be the guy involved in the tackle on this first play where Kyron Williams comes downhill now, under center run concept for five yards I feel like it sets the tone and I hope that play illustrates the conflict that is being created am I saying Mike McDonald can't adjust no I'm saying on some level, he's got to get out of his scheme to do so. And the Rams are forcing you to make that choice. Two high safeties. Kyle Hamilton is to the trip side. This formation is basically called Trey Wing, meaning tight end. And the two receivers are, are to that side at this point. And you've got Kyron Williams downhill for 10 yards. What the Ravens are doing is the opposite of setting the edge on this particular play. Matabike. And Clowney are going to stunt to the inside. And Kyle Hamilton, as a part of the stunt, unfortunately goes to the top side of this block by Puka Nakua. Now, Nakua doesn't really get a hand on him at all, but look at what's happening. Clowney's being taken down because he's stunting to the inside. That's going to happen. Good offensive line or tight end, trained well. When you stunt to the inside, they're just going to take you down. Same thing is happening to Matabike. Hamilton is too high. You've got no complimentary fill from a safety, number one. Number two, I would offer Hamilton should be going inside of the wide receiver's alignment. The path, and that's the thing that's disappointing from a Ravens fan's perspective, but also complimentary towards the Rams, look at the, pa the back's path. It's designed to go downhill. You need to interrupt the path. Get him off his tracks. Kyron Williams was on his tracks the tracks he's been trained on, that the Rams practice on that concept. And so he hits it downhill for 10 yards. I don't see this as surprising, and I don't see this as something that would, quote, change dramatically if the Ravens came out 
and played it the same way consistently. This is, you know, diametrically opposed to, quote, setting the edge. This is bringing a run stunt to the three-receiver side, pre-motion at least. Um, and in this case, it didn't work because Kyle Hamilton goes too far upfield. They ran the ball on nine consecutive plays. Very next play, first and 10, negative 39. This is ace, same formation as the first one. And there's no motion. Again, Kyron Williams just jump cut back to the top side of the screen. Notice what you've got with the edge defender up to the top. Clowney is, quote, setting the edge. The nickel defender is way too far off the line of scrimmage, and you see this consistently on the first three or four drives. I don't know where someone came up with the idea that um, when Kyle Hamilton was on the field before his injury, uh, the Ravens were stopping the Rams. They got the ball smashed down their throat on this first possession by combo blocking, zone blocking. In this case, two linemen comboed Matabike and then worked their way up to um, Roquan Smith. Great, Only a great effort, if you ask me, by Queen and Clowney was able to force this play to be only four yards. Fourth play here, first play, ace. Second play, Trey Wing. Third play, ace. You guessed it, fourth play, Trey Wing. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's beautiful in its simplicity, number one, and the fact that it takes advantage of these defenses like Mike McDonald's that want to be in a too-high safety alignment to create multiple looks for the quarterback. The only problem, at least on the first drive, and for a lot of the first half was Mike McDonald and the Ravens defense were waiting on things, a pass out of under center 11 personnel, to happen that never did. If you watched my reaction video, um, you know that it was 23 plays from under center in the first half by the Rams. 19 of them were, for, were run plays. What are you waiting on a pass play for when it's never going to happen until you make them do so? This is a second and six. The Ravens are trying uh, something that they commonly use against the run. Patrick Queen is going underneath of the first block. And then Roquan Smith is going to fold over the top, which is called fast flow, or we will call it fast flow, on this reverse pivot to Kyron Williams. It's a great job by the offensive line, number 73. I think Roquan's a little bit slow getting out of here and needs to be a little further downhill. I think it's a poor effort by Geno Stone as well. Give the end zone angle so you can see what I'm describing. Trey Wing, three offensive players to the left-hand side of the Rams offense, which draws the nickel out. Motion across changes the dynamic in, in terms of it being a three-by-one, motioning into a two-by-two. Two. Queen's going to go underneath of this block by 65. I think Roquan's a half a step late here in terms of this fast flow, trying to exchange this with Queen. And as a result of him being a half step slow, 73 is able to ride him out of there to our right. Kyron Williams cuts it off of him and you get another 9- or 10-yard gain. Hopefully I explain that in a way that makes sense. Let it run through one more time for you guys to see it on your own. Ravens are also in dual three techniques, which I think kind of is an indicator that you're going to look at a fast flow. When I say dual three techniques, I'm talking about Pierce, outside shade of this guard, Matabike, outside shade of this guard. I think that kind of gives you an indication that this call or this, this technique by first queen going underneath and then Roquan going over the top is common. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. Four plays, two in ace, two in Trey wing. Fifth play, first and 10, you guessed it, ace. Every odd numbered play, ace. Every even numbered play, Trey wing. It's not saying that Sean McVay's offense is easy to stop. In fact, it's not because they're very good at what they do. However, the Ravens have yet to adjust. Nickel defender is to the weak side. Weak side meaning away from the tight end. You can see you got two wide receivers down here. I'm not sure why no one is in the receiver's face. What I'm saying is compressed formation. These receivers are getting free releases. Kyle Hamilton could win that matchup against that X receiver at will. He's a really good football player. I really like him. I'm not sure why he didn't play a whole lot um, after Demarcus Robinson came in. Demarcus Robinson had a touchdown catch, beat Marlon Humphrey. Uh, one or two other times, so credit to him. But this is a matchup, if you're looking at it, and you get a compressed alignment by the X receiver, this is a guy who just physically can't block Kyle Hamilton. He can win that battle. In any case, it's a three-yard gain. We actually do a pretty good job. Um, I think with Matabike, he's being comboed 
Here, the lineman has moved up to Roquan. If you want to complain about our linebackers, go right ahead. Uh, normally, it's, it's a very quick and easy way for me to tell or anyone to tell whether someone's ever coached inside linebackers before. When you've got linemen getting up to your face quickly for you to deal with, it makes your job exponentially harder. In my opinion, we would have been better suited trying to get this team to run off their tracks um, to the outside. Now, having said that, credit to McVay and those guys for switching up the pattern. This is, I believe, six play, and they've gone ace now two plays in a row. you got ace, Trey Wing. Ace, Trey Wing, ace, ace. Well, the nickel defender, again, is Hamilton up to the field. Lined up pretty deep, if you ask me. Still a compressed formation, but a wider alignment by that X to the top side of the screen. And it's a jet sweep to Nakua. So it's, it's quite easy to say right now, hey, coach, you want us to force them to run outside? Well, here's Nakua running outside for six yards. I don't know about you. I would rather have to deal with this shit than to deal with the downhill run stuff, off tackle, inside zone, duo. And give me this. And the complimentary plays off of it, which McVay has built into the offense, don't get me wrong. It's a brilliant call by him, if you ask me. It's a really poor job, I think, schematically, of us dealing with the X receiver in a way, oh, we're going to play press man on against a team under center that's running the football 80% of the time. 82%, in fact, in the first half. Now, you might say, well, Coach, we don't know that yet at this point on the first drive. Yes, we did. If you watched my preview for it, the, I had the exact numbers. I think it was 46 plays under center that I had on film, and exactly 81% of them were run plays. Those numbers hold. Play callers generally don't change until you make them. Credit to Sean McVay for being a guy who came in here on the first drive and said, we're going to be who we are, and we're going to run the ball at them, and it was successful. I think we're out of position from an alignment standpoint against this threat. And you may disagree. That's no problem. We, it took us too long to make an adjustment. And again, credit to the Rams and McVay for coming in with a, a mentality to run the football. Third and one here, you can tell. You didn't even need me to tell you that necessarily because you see the Ravens' alignment here is designed to stop the run. I'm not saying that we should do that dramatic an alignment on every play, but we didn't play defense in a manner that reflected the data. And that's the part that's frustrating to me. If you listened to my reaction video, you probably were, um, the coach is off base here. Coach is being too harsh. Well, when the data tells me it's 82% or 81% or whatever in terms of run-pass relationship, I'm going to try to stop what you do 81 or 82% of the time. You may say, well, coach, they can throw the ball. Well, they weren't going to until we made them. And I'll show you how we made them. Different formation, I guess, on the very next play, uh, first and 10 from the 37-yard line, because now the tight end is off the line of scrimmage. It's really the same alignment. Nakua is the wide receiver who's on. It's a compressed alignment. The nickel is to this side for some reason, I guess because we're calling that the wide side. we got a wide side right call. And you're going to get Williams for two yards against the grain of the motion. There's also a face mask on Tavius Robinson here. But I'm glad that at least we have Tavius Robinson and Kyle Van Noy on now. You get a run through by Roquan Smith, very similar to one that he had in the third quarter for a tackle for loss that I thought was pivotal. pivotal. And again, you get a combo. This time these two guys are basically ushering Travis Jones wherever they want to take him. They combo him right into Queen's lap. We're very fortunate that the angle was there for Roquan to hold him to a two-yard gain, but unfortunate that face mask was called on Tavius Robinson that tacked on 15 yards. Same formation. This will be the third formation, like I said, that's shown on this drive. Twin slot, tight, basically. We would still call this ace. If the guys are going to be lined up that close together, the only difference is now the tight end can motion. It's a kick play. I didn't feel like we were putting Kyle Hamilton in a position to win a matchup. When you have a weapon like this guy, I would like to put him in in a position to win a matchup. This alignment right here might be a little bit too wide to put the nickel in front of him, but this one's not. I'm saying I would like to see the nickel lined up somewhere in this area 
to make Cooper Cup have to deal with a physically dominant player earlier. And in this case, you get a kick by the tight end on Van Noy. Look at how many guys are blocking, having to deal with blockers immediately. Credit to the Rams. they got a really good offensive line. they got a great scheme. Uh, Travis Jones, I'll give you the end zone angle. This is 11 yards, by the way. Should be frustrating to you. It was to me. This is why I uh, was so frustrated in the reaction video. Travis Jones almost is able to win here. He does win on the backside, excuse me. He's almost able to get involved and make the tackle. The motion is consistently forcing people to step outside because I don't think we did a good job of identifying the difference in the motions. Wide receiver motion with Nakua or Cup could be jet sweep. You saw it for six yards on the second and seven earlier. Tight end motion is not going to be jet sweep. Generally, it's a, uh, it's a kick play, and in some instances, play action. Stafford getting the ball out quick. Look at how many guys are dealing with blockers immediately at the second level, the first level, in the case of Van Noy. It's just a, if you just take a snapshot of the numbers in here, they've got a numbers advantage, very similar to the first play, if you ask me. See 10 on 7. You may have a different count. Now, 10 on 7 is a little bit simplistic because the quarterback doesn't count. But we're talking about the number of available players in an area to do something, either block for the offense, destroy a block, and make a tackle for the defense. When you're at a numerical disadvantage, I feel like you're going to lose a larger majority of the time. I don't feel like the Ravens were put in position to stop the threat that the Rams showed when they were under center. Now here you have an interesting moment. The Ravens have gone base personnel against the Rams 11. So we've got two outside linebackers on the field, two inside linebackers, Roquan and Queen, and then three interior linemen. So we're saying we're going to stop the run. That's probably the reason why Sean McVay called a pass play here after nine consecutive run plays to open the game. Uh, incomplete pass a little bit behind uh, Demarcus Robinson, who had kind of lost Brandon Stevens a little bit. Not sure about you, but in live time, I thought, well, why are they throwing the ball? They just ran the ball nine times, including the previous one run was for 11 yards. The only time we stopped them for something short was on the third and one or uh, the face mask by Tavius Robinson on the two-yard run on first and 10 by Kyron Williams. I think the reason why McVay called a pass play is because we came out on our base defensive personnel, and he clearly knew that as he was making his play call. Second and 10, we've gone nickel now because it's second and goal from the nine, I should say. It's going to be incomplete to Nakua, who basically is just running his route directly into uh, Kyle Hamilton. And I am one of those people who thinks things like this should not be called. If the receiver is going to run directly into the DB or any defender's space, there's going to be contact. I don't have to move out of your way to let you run into me, push off, whatever the word is. Yes, Kyle Hamilton is grabbing here. He's got another human being running full speed directly into him. We don't have to open our hips and give you a side one way or the other. This, to me, is intimidation. I don't mean physical intimidation. I mean, from a DB standpoint, if this happens to you the first time, it could dissuade you from doing the same thing the second time or ensuing uh, plays during the game and cause you to pick a side, meaning go to the top side and then potentially give him an in-breaking route or jump to the inside to avoid the contact and then potentially give him an outbreaking route. At the NFL level, you wouldn't expect someone to mentally give in like that, and Kyle Hamilton damn sure isn't going to. My point is things like this I've seen at multiple levels, high school, youth, foot, youth football level, I don't have to uh, uh, allow you to have the space. If I have my space established, to me, this is very akin to a charge in basketball, and I don't think that anything like that should be called. I'm sure Rams fans will have a different opinion. That's no problem. Rams fans have actually been extremely cool in the comment section before the game and after the game. In any case, third and goal, incomplete to Cooper Cup uh, to the left side, kind of like this cup route where there's a little bit of a hesitation and Stafford throws it you know, up, but it's not really throwing it up like in a prayer. He understands that there's pressure and he understands the route and the coverage. Clearly, it's man across the board, and you got Millette on Cup who's going to fake the little uh, China in and then bring it back to the sideline. In this case, thrown a little bit overhead. Millette is in great position, even if it was in balance, but to potentially get an interception. You guys, let me know what you think. I have a lot of respect for the offense that the Rams run. Who does 11 personnel run concepts in, in 2023? Who did it in 2018? Well, Sean McVay did. 
the 49ers do some of it, but oftentimes they have a, fu- a fullback on the field. Credit to them for using wide receivers in a way that expects them to block, number one. But number two, creates angles and numerical advantages that defenses have to adjust to. Now, they play Washington this week. I personally don't think that the Rams are this Super Bowl contending type team that now that everyone is healthy are going to go on a run. Having said that, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're able to generate 350, 400 yards of offense against Washington, who I don't believe has a defense near the caliber of ours. Having said all that, I stick by what I said at the beginning of the video. If we come out here and we played them again this week, if for whatever reason Washington was replaced with Baltimore in week 15, and we line up in the same way and play our techniques the exact same manner, I think the Rams would have an opportunity to control large segments of the game like they did in the first half. I think they had 19 minutes and 20 seconds of possession compared to our 1040 or something like that, basically two to one. And I think a lot of that was because they're a bad matchup for the way we typically run our defense against 11 personnel. Most teams in 11 personnel are not lining up in this manner and creating small, albeit very important, numerical advantages in the tight space that you see here. Hopefully I was able to explain this in a way that makes sense. If you guys um, enjoy the video, you know, please let me know in the comment section, number one. Number two, there's probably elements of certain plays that I missed. Feel free to point those out as well. And if you think other Ravens fans or maybe even Rams fans would enjoy this uh, hopefully balanced look at the first possession of the game where I think the Rams came in and punched the Ravens defense in the mouth, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.